we on the air? Good evening, friends and folks. Thank you for inviting me into your home. Tonight, we have for you five of the strangest duels ever fought in history. That's right, yes sir. These are five really real duels that really, really happen. That is, of course, if you trust the newspapers that reported these duels. As always, this radio broadcast urges its listeners to maintain a healthy level of skepticism when appropriate. Anyhow, ahead of us, we have perhaps the greatest and oddest fight card ever assembled. So, without further ado, let us begin with round one. Ah, what a beautiful evening here tonight in West New York, New Jersey. Our first duel of the night comes from the year 1900, and let me tell you folks, this one is a long time coming. The following contest will be fought between two firemen. In one corner, Mr. John Shearer, and in the other, Albert Gerard. Bad blood has been brewing between these two for quite a while now, and tonight they turn their attention from fighting fires to fighting each other. Now, being fired in this duel, we fought with weapons appropriate to their wielders. You will not see any pistols, knives, or even thrown punches in this bout. No, sir. Mr. Gerard and Mr. Shearer are both equipped with 100 feet of fire hose. Tonight, we bear witness to a water duel. And there's the bell. Each man's hose is now filling with water, both competitors straining to control such powerful weapons. Folks, the crowd is absolutely abuzz with excitement here tonight. And Gerard lands the first blow. A powerful jet of water strikes Shearer right beneath the chin. Oh, what a beautiful move. He ducked right underneath Shearer's blast of water and countered with a shot of his own. Unbelievable dexterity on display tonight from Albert Gerard. Ah, uh, uh, but it'll take more than one shot to keep Shearer down. He's already back rising to his feet. Real competitors, these two. And oh, oh, anger flashes across the face of John Shearer. Fury, even. He charges forward, pure malice behind the spray of his hose. Gerard ducks the blast, readies his own hose. And oh, Gerard, he scores another clean hit on Shearer. John Shearer down in the dirt again. And this crowd is absolutely erupting. Water and mist soaking the audience as they push and shove closer to the action. And Lord above, an errant hose blast has just struck a spectator. What an atmosphere down here tonight. Wait, wait a minute. Folks, wait, wait just a minute. I am now receiving word that John Shearer's cornerman has just thrown in the towel. This match is over. John Shearer, bleeding profusely from the nose and ears, is being carted away for medical attention. The wounds of war just too much to overcome. Round one, our first winner tonight, Albert Gerard. And we are back, live on the cusp of the second duel of the evening. This matchup comes to us from the year 1887, and it originates from, wow, all across the United States of America, Wisconsin, North Dakota, Kansas, and more. Newspapers all across the country are reporting on the tarantula duel that is now about to take place here in beautiful Tampico, Mexico. And ah, the competitors have arrived. In one corner, a mining speculator, Senor Victoria, and his opponent. In the other corner, Senor Pedraza, a wealthy man in the maritime business. And folks, just like our last duel, this one has history behind it. Just a few weeks ago, Pedraza and Victoria, both deep in the clutches of alcohol, engaged in a quarrel over the hand of a woman. Victoria, quite displeased with the love triangle, has challenged Pedraza to a contest. And that is why tonight, the very rare tarantula duel is about to take place. In just a few moments, Pedraza and Victoria will be placed in a room filled with exactly 100 poison tarantulas. The two men will then be required to kill as many of the spiders as possible. No direct combat will be fought between the two. This is a duel of survival. Neither man may leave until all 100 tarantulas have been killed. And just like that, we're off. Both men now entering the room with the spiders and... What, what's this? Apparently, just to add to the danger, this duel will be fought in complete darkness. Friends, I am afraid I cannot see a thing. Pedraza and Victoria are alone with the tarantulas. Nobody here, nobody here has any idea how this duel may be shaping out and... Oh, the lights, the lights have returned and... The horror. The horror. Both Pedraza and Victoria lay dead before us. Both combatants have fallen victim to the tarantulas. Or perhaps, I should say, fallen victim to their own hubris. 
Hello, folks, and welcome back to the show. If you are just tuning in tonight, we are currently broadcasting from Paris, France. The year is 1808, and a true, magnificent duel is currently underway. As I speak, Mr. Grand Prix and Mr. Le Piquet are floating in hot air balloons almost 1,000 yards above my head. The two men are dueling today over the love of an opera dancer, and it is very likely that this contest will be fought to the death. At this very moment, both men are now firing blunderbusses at the other's balloon. One precise shot is all it will take. It's only a matter of time before... And there it is. Folks, Mr. Grand Prix has sent a bullet straight through his opponent's balloon. And down comes Le Piquet, falling, falling, falling. Oh, I can't look. Folks, folks, I believe I can say confidently, by the carnage before me, the Mr. Grand Prix has won the third duel of the evening. Welcome back to the outskirts of Paris. Our thrilling show is just about to continue with a duel from 1890. This battle will be waged between two acrobats who have decided to end their long-standing personal tension with a duel to the death. And ah, here come the men now. Both acrobats are making their way down to the ring, pistols in hand. And would you look at that? Both combatants have brought along their pet circus monkeys. Oh, those little animals are a hoot. Dancing and performing along with their masters, it is a real treat to see these beasts. Ah, and the two men. The two men have now reached the ring. They have each marched out 25 paces away. It seems as if they are both ready to fire. And away we go. Both men raise their weapons. Shots ring out. And, and... Folks, folks, no one has fallen. No blood has stained the ring. Both men are still standing. It seems as if, as if neither acrobat has managed to hit their opponent. I know, now, both men, in a stunning display of sportsmanship and goodwill, have agreed to put their differences aside. They have resolved their conflict without the use of violence. Oh, what a turn of events. What a beautiful end to a duel. There will be no death here in this con- Wait, oh no. Wait a minute, the two monkeys, they both grabbed their owner's pistols. They're climbing into the ring. Oh no, they must have thought that their masters were just engaging in some kind of circus performance. Oh no, the monkeys, the monkeys are pointing their pistols at each other. Somebody get in there, somebody stop them. So oh no, the thunder of gunfire has just echoed across the arena. Those two poor beasts have just slain each other. What a horrible end to a promising competition. And now, hold on to your britches. It is time for the main event of the evening. From Millersburg, Kentucky in 1848, I, your humble commentator, can feel the excitement in the air. This match will be contested between Bill Bowman, a very well-liked preacher here in Millersburg, and an unnamed local desperado who has made a habit of heckling Mr. Bowman's sermons. Quite recently, the conflict between the two has reached a boiling point, leading the desperado to challenge Mr. Bowman to a duel. Now, since Mr. Bowman was the man who was challenged, it is his right to choose the duel's weaponry. And hey, speak of the devil. Here comes Mr. Bowman now. Let's see what kind of deadly armaments he has chosen. Perhaps the pastor would like to fight with guns or swords or... No, folks, I cannot believe what I am seeing. Mr. Bowman has just walked into this duel with no more than two large sacks of genuine Irish potatoes. Friends, I am proud to announce that we will soon be watching perhaps the world's first and only potato duel. Oh, and folks, it looks as if the Desperado is not happy at all with Mr. Bowman's choice of weapons. But, as is dueling tradition, he must accept Mr. Bowman's selection. And now, both duelists are getting into position. Fifteen paces apart, a large sack of potatoes at each man's side. Folks, this place is just electric. I might hazard to guess that the whole town of Millersburg has come out to witness this historic contest. And there's the bell. Bowman reaches down for his potato. He cocks back and, oh, with the power of a cannon, the humble preacher has landed a direct hit to the chest of the desperado. Bits of potato are flying through the air tonight in Kentucky. And now the desperado, 
He picks up a potato of his own. He attempts to return fire and, oh, his throw. His throw is well off target. Perhaps he is still rattled from that first strike. The desperado now, he leans down for another potato. And oh, Mr. Bowman hits him again. Mr. Bowman with a second potato to the ribs. The desperado is in trouble now. He reaches down for a potato and no, Mr. Bowman hits him again. Every time the desperado reaches into his sack, Mr. Bowman is there with another perfectly placed vegetable missile. And oh, that last one, that last shot was a particularly fierce hit directly to the short ribs. The desperado looks winded and the Desperado is down. The Desperado is down, ladies and gentlemen. The duel is over. Mr. Bowman wins the potato duel. The crowd is absolutely deafening. Laughter and cheers are ringing out over the battlefield. But oh, folks, believe me when I tell you that the eyes of the preacher are unchanged. Despite his victory, Mr. Bowman stands solemnly, sternly, as if he has just finished delivering a funeral sermon. And now, and now the desperado is being taken out on a stretcher. Folks, I am no medical expert, but I expect him to spend the next week in bed recovering from the wounds that he has sustained here tonight. What an absolutely thrilling conclusion to an absolutely thrilling event. Folks, that is all from me tonight. I hope you enjoyed our radio broadcast, and I do sincerely hope to see you next time. Thank you for listening.